Um, in my spare time, I have a couple of hobbies. Uh, my primary one actually is uh, uh, compulsively analyzing Jonathan Colton sucks for hidden meanings. Uh, it's actually easier than you think. Um, well, no, really. I mean, it's like take uh, uh, okay, space doggy. That's like the easiest one, right? Right at the top, like the first lyrics. They open up the hidden meaning right there. The cage is very small, tiny silver ball. He's talking about BBs. And what do BBs do? They put your eye out, right? It's not hard to get the hidden meaning there, right? It's right in front of you. It's like uh, Skull Crusher Mountain. It's actually about a bad real estate investment. <laughs> the mountain's covered in wolves! First of May, right? That's easy. It's a nightmarish future where talking animals control our calendars. <laughs> the future soon is about the past. I got like a way down the, the, the list, and then I decided to actually apply it to um, Mike Furman's stuff and got to Chicken Monkey Duck and realized that was a song about Jonathan Colton. <laughs> so I decided to give that particular hobby up, and in my spare time, uh, I, with that that I now had, not having to do that, I actually, I wrote a book. And there's the cover of it. And I'd like to read uh, a brief story from uh, this book to you that I think you will find entertaining. Uh, the premise of the book, just real quickly, is that I've been a Microsoft employee forever. Uh, actually, like more than 15 years now. So I've seen quite a few things, and the idea behind the book is to share some funny and humorous stories that most people don't think of when they think about someone who writes a Microsoft book. Oh, I'm writing about my time at Microsoft. Oh, great, he's writing. It's a tell-all book. Blah, 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 blah. It's not really especially technical, and it's really designed to sort of share with you the fact that as everyone thinks of Microsoft as a big, giant, monolithic company, it's actually a company made up of a whole lot of people who are typically really passionate about what they do, but there are some unique things that seem to only happen inside Microsoft. Now, during the Q&A, uh, I spoke a little bit about um, my pride sometimes at referencing uh, certain works that I'm really, really uh, uh, a fan of in my work as sort of an homage. And this particular story is going to be the one that I talked about during the Q&A. Now, if you'll notice, up on the screen, the, the particular uh, monitors each have a different image in them. This is going to be a story about the one with the maze. And it's entitled, A Maze of Twisty Passages, All Alike. So this is the part where I get to rant for a second, and bear with me. Know this, for after my 15 years at the company, I can say it's a fact. Microsoft's developers, software, executives, employees, our actions are not, and never have been, really intentionally evil. Microsoft's building designers, however, are. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. The designers are just doing what they're told, maximizing available space for working environments, all within a budget. But the people who design all the directional signs inside all Microsoft buildings, yeah, they're evil. They're the spawn of someone really evil, like Hitler uh, or Stalin. Who's, who's worse, Hitler or Stalin? Or Satan. Actually, Satan, Satan's probably worse than Hitler or Stalin. Or, okay, the sign people are uh, the spawn of Hitler. Lizzie Borden, Satan, and Billy Bob Rubik, who I learned from Wikipedia is the designer of the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Thanks, Wikipedia. Anyway, it's bad enough that in the from the top down x-ray view, every Microsoft building resembles a maze from one of those 1001 mazes books you always see in the checkout line at the grocery store. It's bad enough that even inside some Microsoft buildings, the first floor is designed completely different from the second floor. And the third floor actually bends space and time such that I swear I once saw David Boyd walking on the ceiling. <laughs> Those things alone would be enough to be villainy. Now what is worse, far worse, is the fact that all the interior signs helpfully lead you right like a lamb to the slaughterhouse, but they, they end up leaving you just short of your actual destination, wondering if you missed a sign. And by the way, what's with all the lambs <laughs> So I'm going to give you an example, and to be mindful of Microsoft's... I'm just going to go with that. <clears throat> uh, to be mindful of Microsoft's security protocols, uh, they restrict us from taking photos inside the building with the level of detail that I'm actually about to describe. So I'm going to provide you with sort of an approximation uh, of the hell we have to go through trying to find our way around. 
So I'm going to set the mood for you. You're in an unfamiliar building for a meeting. You've arrived with more than five minutes to spare, plenty of time. You exit the elevator and are greeted with this initial sign. Now, you know that your meeting is in conference room 2576. So you exit the elevator to the right, intending to go to the kitchen to grab a drink because it's on your way. You walk down the hall and to the next sign, which says this. <laughs> That's odd, you think. Where did 2576 go? Well, I'm sure there's another sign near the kitchen, you decide. So you enter the kitchen and grab a coffee. Now, the Microsoft Starbucks coffee machines actually brew, brew your coffee per cup from a custom grind. It takes about 90 seconds. But you figure you have plenty of time. Now that coffee is accomplished, you exit the far side of the kitchen and you find this. <laughs> oh, you think, you know, there it is. You continue down the hall. Now, at this point, you really only have a minute or two before your meeting. So you scan the next sign and you see. <laughs> You're momentarily surprised that the restroom is now folded space to move in front of you. <laughs> and you pause to realize the conference rooms have, been, have disappeared from the sign to be replaced by the office supply room. Now you're completely confused. Because the last sign had a room range of 2300 to 2400, but this new one expands that to 2491 and sends you in a completely different direction for the other rooms. Neither room range matches the conference room that you're trying to get to. Figuring that surely a conference room like 2576 would be in the general direction of the increasingly larger numbered offices, you proceed gamely in the direction of the 2350 to 2491 range. Your meeting has now officially started when you reach 2491 down some long, deserted hallway. Pardon me, my iPad just doubled it. Uh, and you stumble across conference room 2999 filled with people you don't even know. On the door is a sticker that says, meeting moved to conference room 2202, parentheses, by the stairs, close parentheses. Now people in the offices around room 2999 are kind of looking at you because you probably just uttered out loud, you've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> Your smartphone, watch, internal timing mechanism, whatever, informs you that you are now three minutes late. You hustle back down the hallway to the sign you just passed, only to see that totally different signs are posted facing the other way. Now you're six minutes late, and you still have no idea where you are in the building. You get a text message on your phone from your boss or other helpful coworker trying to protect your reputation as not being one of those people who's always late. The text says, VP is here. We're waiting for you to start. The VP, the vice president of the division, is here? Oh my god, you may or may not exclaim out loud. You run back to the elevator. On the way, you pass conference room 2202. In your haste and panic, you think you recognize a friend of yours in 2202 who's supposed to be at your meeting. But they can't, that can't be because yours is in 2576. Maybe they just had a more important meeting in 2202 and couldn't make it to yours. But regardless, you're seven minutes late and you need to find 2576. Heading in the opposite direction from the elevator's initial sign, you find five feet away from the elevator with no signage pointing you there whatsoever, conference room 2576. It is filled with people you do not know. It has a sticker on it that says, blah, 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 meeting, your meeting, has been moved to 2999. <laughs> which you remember had a sticker on it saying it had been moved to 2202, which you just passed and now realize it's filled with your friend, the people, and the vice president for the meeting. <laughs> you may or may not at this point scream out loud, motherfucker! <laughs> and run back to 2202, forsaking signs altogether. You try as nonchalantly as possible to open the door and enter, saying carefully and slightly breathlessly, my apologies for being late, I couldn't find the room. The vice president looks you up and down and says, but I had enough free time to get some coffee, I see. Oh. The sign-in situation at Microsoft is so pervasive that among some employees, if you want to send a passive-aggressive signal about who needs the meeting more than you, you make all the invitees come to your building. Likewise, if you need to make peace or resolve a conflict you think you might be wrong about, you schedule the meeting in their building as a peace offering. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs>